Right, there's the motor itself. A little fan. Make sure there's no no wear on the on the fan. Uh, I mean, a little bit of wear doesn't matter. But for example, if you've got one of these broken off, then it'll put the whole thing out of balance. It'll be terribly noisy. If it's just a little bit of damage, say it's a piece broken off, you haven't got a spare one, what you can do, what we used to do out in the field if we were stuck, is to break a piece off the other side, the corresponding opposite, and then that would balance it out and it would still work. But obviously if you've got a fan, you can put it on. You don't need to take that off at the moment for dismantling. So to dismantle the motor, <coughs> there's three black bolts or screws, the one there and two there. And they've got nuts, hex-headed nuts, in there. And, and they're not fitted in the casing, they will come loose, but they're, they've, they're, um, the casing is moulded to accept the hexagonal part of the nuts so it doesn't turn, okay? So the next job is to take the casing off. But before you do that, you have to take one of the wires off here, and also it's worth taking off this carbon brush wire here. So we'll just undo that one, top carbon brush. Make sure you remember which screw is which because they are different threads on them and they're different lengths and if you put the long screw in here you notice certain screws have longer threads than others and it will be too tight and it will force it out of adjustment. There's the carbon brush. There we go. Now that brush is worn down a little bit. It's not too bad. I suppose it should be about when they're new they're only about an eighth of an inch longer than that but uh, look at the condition of the brush. Lovely and shiny which indicates there's been no burning or arcing or very little, so that motor is perfectly, uh, electrically wise, that motor is very healthy, judging by that carbon brush. If you had a problem with the armature, it would be arcing, the brush would burn down, it would show exhibit burn marks on the brush, but that looks nice and clean and shiny. So I'm going to put that in the little tray there, so we know where it is. That's the one, and then you need to take this one out here. You don't need to take all these off, leave those alone, unless you're replacing the switch, it's not necessary. Take them off if you want, but make sure you mark where they go, otherwise you'll get mixed up. Take that one screw out. Having done that, you can then pull this wire, this wire here out. You're supposed to be able to. It's a bit tight, this one. Why are things always difficult when you've got a camera going? Any other time, it's a piece of cake. There we go. Right, see that? Pull that wire out there. That's the other field coil wire, and you need that off to take the motor apart. Now then, we'll take this back screw out first. Notice the nut will fall off at the bottom. There you go. That's the screw. And, and there's the little nut for it on the other, it's falling out the other side. The two front screws are shorter than the back screw, so you'll make sure you get the right ones in. The two at the front are shorter. That's one. And that's the other. There we go. Now having done that, this whole casing piece should pull off, but you've got to take this little rubber seal off first. It's important to make sure you either replace it or put a new one on if you can get one, a gasket, because otherwise you'll get dust everywhere, that seals the thing. So that should then lift off. You can pull that wire out, and there you go. There's the motor cover. You can put that aside, you can clean that later. We don't need that for the moment. Make sure you get the screws safely. There's the other one. And you'll see there's two short ones and one long one, the long one goes at the back, and make sure you retrieve the three nuts. There's two, and there's the third one, okay? So there's the motor. Uh, you can see it's all filled with fluff and everything. That's the armature, and the little cooling fan. Rear bearing and front bearing, okay? Right, before we do anything else, I'm gonna give this a bit of a clean up, and then we'll go into dismantling. So I'm gonna turn off for the moment, and we'll start again when, I'm taken, when I've cleaned it up, and we'll um, do the dismantle of the motor. Right, there we are, just giving it a clean up. That's a good tip that when you're doing that, just get an old, I use an old vacuum cleaner, I've got an old cylinder cleaner, and an old paintbrush is ideal for cleaning it out. We'll give it a proper clean up when we get it apart. So the next stage is I'm gonna take the armature and the bearings out so we can check them. First job to do is the, the bottom carbon brush. Again, remember what I said about the screw, they are different threads and different lengths, so make sure you get the right one. This one is particularly important because it's a very a smallish, length screw and if you put a long one in it will press that out and the brush will stick and it won't work. There's the other carbon brush as you can see 
it's again it's same condition as the original the other one it is sometimes a good area to put a mark on the brush so you get them in the right places so they're worn down exactly at the right angle etc but I shan't bother I'll put that over there at the way right that's the carbon brush wire off the only other thing you need to do now is to release the two bolts here and the two self tapping things there and we can lift the whole thing out on some models they have a, a suppressor capacitor there it's been removed on this one they used to blow up after a while the end would blow out and there's an earth where it goes on there so if you've got one of those you have to take that nut off first before you can remove that it, it just goes on top there but there isn't in this case so all we've got to do is undo this screw here there we go make sure you remember because they're all different lengths and, and sizes of screws different threads and all sorts and I'm doing this screw on the back there in now. This one's got a nut on. The first one I took out is tapped into the bearing retainer. So there's a the nut. Again, that nut is different to the nuts that hold the motor together. That's a little bracket there. Look. It's different to the bracket that holds the front bearing in. These are <laughs> typical Hoover. These two are normal crosshead screws rather than Phillips head screws. There's two screws there. You pull that out, and now we should be able to lift. Oh, I've got to remember I haven't done the field coil yet. This, the, the armatures and everything's loose, but the field coil is held in by those two crosshead screws there. So we take those two out. Hope you can see this. It's a bit tricky. There we go. Try and do my best to show what's happening. So it can be a fiddly job. I've done thousands of these, so it's quite easy for me. It's more difficult explaining. And then that, that whole lot should lift out. That bottom bearing, that sleeve bearing, is a bit tight. That's a non -gen, not a genuine Hoover one, and they were, they did tend to be a bit tight sometimes. You job to get them out. The Hoover one pushes in quite easily. See that should just pull out. There we go. That's it. That's the field coil there, the winding. And somebody's put a bit of paper on there at some point to. to prise it out a bit probably because they put non genuine part in it I would imagine you don't need that it's not normally on there that's the field coil anyway it's just a simple straightforward coil give that a clean up later before we put it back in there we go there's the little bracket that holds the front bearing in now there should be you see along here there's a little I don't know if you can see it on the camera there's a little slot there goes round there and into there and you'll notice there's a bit of rubber in there right that bit of rubber shouldn't be. Take it out that. Try that. I think somebody's had a bodge this one up. This looks a right bodge, whoever's done this. And it wasn't me, by the way. Anyway, take that out. What there is, there's supposed to be a little gasket. Somebody's glued that in. It's not glued in, it's just a little rubber seal. I've got some in the in my store so I can find a replacement one and what is when it's assembled you put the little rubber seal in it it seals the motor casing the two halves together runs through around there to stop all the dust getting in there obviously not very successful looking at the dust in there but it does generally stop a lot of the dust you don't need to take these out but you need to give it a good clean out but we'll cover that later <clears throat> I'll do that when I'm making me cup of tea well not when I'm making me tea obviously when I'm drinking it <laughs> excuse me all this dust getting down me Right, now to get the fan off, all you've got to do is hold the armature in your hand like that and just grab it like that and turn it. If it's tight, this one's a bit tight, normally they just unscrew in instantly, but this one's a bit tight, probably because again it's not a genuine Hoover one and they're tight, so I'll have to get a pair of pliers on that. <coughs> so we've got the pliers, you just grip that, you should be able to, there you go. It is a bit tight. It's normally just a loose fit. Take that off. And then we'll take the fan off. Right, there's the fan. There's always a lot of dust there. And note there's an insulating Paxlin washer there. Then you'll find there's a number of other spacing washers. Uh, there are not in no particular order. There's thick ones and thin ones. So take those off. Don't lose any of these. And then you've got the little sleeve, a little collar the spacer put those aside so you won't get them lost or anything now you got that there's the ball bearing I can you can't hear it probably but 
it's a bit rumbly, normally they're quiet, and then you've got your sleeve bearing on the end. Um, if When these go really badly, it will actually eventually wear that shaft down, and even if you put a new bearing in, it won't solve it, because the shaft's at it. But um, this one isn't that bad, actually. I might just put a bit of grease in and put it back in, because it's not too bad. But it is easy to replace. I think you can still buy these. I've got some in the in my stock anyway, that I've kept for years. Right, that should just pull off. They do get a bit tight sometimes, and you might have to tap it, either put it in the vise, hold it in the vise, or sometimes just a sharp tap. I'll get me mallet. If in doubt, hit it with a, give it a clout if in doubt. That one's gonna be a bit tight. I might have to put that in the vise to tap it out. I'll do that now, off the camera. So you can't see what I'm doing. Whoops. It's normally just a loose fit, and you can just clout it out. Go in. I'm still here. Don't go away. There you go. That's the ball bearing. And that's the armature. Now if you look at the armature, it looks pretty good to me. I mean it looks it's, there's no just give it a bit of a clean little white round. There's no um burning or anything around here. The the all the sediments look clean and okay to me. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, that is actually an original, genuine Hoover armature, the one that was put in when they made it, probably. Looks genuine to me, anyway. Nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, so that's that. Now, the bearing, <clears throat> you'll notice that's got four holes in. reason for that is they don't need the four holes in this application, in this model. It's not needed. But they use the same bearing on the 652 range, and they're held in with four rivets or four bolts, so that's why it's got holes in. But... In this application, it just fits in there like that with a clamp, so holes aren't needed. All you do is just let dust in, actually. But what we've got to do is lubricate that bearing. Now, you can't lubricate it easily, because, it, as you can see, it's actually a, just a ball bearing inside there, but it's in this container, which is pressed together, so you can't really take that apart to lubricate it. So you need a special tool for that, a Hoover grease gun, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Right, here we go. That's the official Hoover grease gun. You can't buy these in the shops, although I have seen them on eBay for sale. That's a genuine Hoover gun made by Hoover, especially for, for uh, servicing their Hoovers. As it's set up there with just that piece on, that's for lubricating the agitator bearings in the end of here, and we'll come to that later. But in this application, I need to grease that bearing, and it's no good using it like that. What you need is one of these nozzles. That's a large one, and that's a medium. There's a small one as well for older machines, but we need the medium one. So you screw that on there, like so. <coughs> now, if you notice, when I press this, it's pretty tight. The grease will ooze out through these little tiny holes around there, so that it gets right inside the ball bearing. So what you do, you pop it in the bearing like that, and then you have to press it hard on the bench like this. Put a bit of force behind it. And when the grease comes out the back end, which it isn't doing at the moment, it means that it's got through the bearing. So I'll do it this way as well. Sometimes you have to do it both ways. There we are. We'll see if it's worked. Looking at the grease around there. It might not have got in, but we can tell by putting it on there and see if it's smoother. Yeah, that is a lot smoother. Yeah, that's okay. That's really the only real way of greasing it. I mean, you could try and force grease in there, but there, there are two um, felt washers either side of the bearing to stop the dirt and dust getting in the bearing. Uh, the bearing is an open type bearing, so you know, you could, you've got to force the grease in there. It is possible to prise this open if you get a pair of very fine cutters. I mean, you could prise this outer rim off round here where it's peened over and take it apart and grease it in it. If you can't buy a new one, I mean, you could buy a new one, you could pop that in. Depends how bad the bearing is. I'm a scrimper, so I don't like replacing things. If I can repair them and grease it, it's perfectly all right. So having done, that's that done. What I'm going to do now, <coughs> I shall turn off the camera, have a little break. Uh, it's getting on for hmm, 20 to 3, so it's about time for tea. Everything stops at 3 for tea. So I should probably go and get a cup of tea. And I'll, in the meantime, I'll give it a bit of a clean up and then we'll go through the reassembly, okay? I'll see you in a bit. Don't go away. Well, you can go away and have a cup of tea, but come back again, otherwise you'll miss the best part. <laughs> 